Hi, my name is Abigail Marsh. I'm a professor of psychology and neuroscience at Georgetown University, and I'm a psychopathy researcher. I'd like to talk today about what the difference is between a psychopath and a sociopath, because I get this question a lot. Almost everybody has heard both terms used sort of interchangeably in movies and books and the media to describe people who engage in frequent aggressive or criminal or antisocial behavior. And so the question is, do these two terms mean the same thing or different things? Is one of them more accurate or more accepted than the other? And why are there two terms at all? I have some answers. First of all, let me set the record straight. Psychopath, or even better, psychopathy, is the recognized scientific and clinical term. There are hundreds of psychopathy researchers at universities and research hospitals all over the world. I'm one of them. Many of us are members of a scientific society for the study of psychopathy, and thousands of scientific research articles about psychopathy appear in major psychiatry and psychology journals. You can measure psychopathy pretty accurately using well-validated scientific screening tools. None of this is true about sociopathy. It is just not a recognized scientific or clinical term. If you look for scientific articles about sociopaths, there are only a couple dozen, mostly from the 1960s and 1970s. There are no sociopathy researchers or societies and no sociopathy screening tools. So the question is, why do so many people use the term sociopath, not just the media, but even some clinical psychologists and psychiatrists? It's partly because the term psychopath makes people kind of uncomfortable. It is a very old term. Clinicians have recognized for years that a small subset of people in every population around the world engages in pretty persistent antisocial behaviors, and they seem to lack a conscience or pro-social emotions like empathy and remorse and guilt, which usually motivate people to avoid exploiting or harming other people. In the early 1800s, the French physician Philippe Pinel described such people as having mani sans délire, which means insanity without delirium. Later, a German psychiatrist coined the term psychopathique, or a suffering soul, and then finally, the psychiatrist Hervey Cleckley helped bring the term psychopath into the mainstream in the 1930s with his amazing book, The Mask of Sanity, where he documented case studies of patients with psychopathy and the symptoms that characterized them, like a cold, fearless temperament, a lack of remorse or empathy, a manipulative or deceitful interpersonal style that hides behind a mask of charm and confidence and friendliness, and sometimes, although not always, uh, people with these traits can be quite violent or criminal. The issue is that the term psychopath has always had other problems. The first one is it's really confusing because it sounds like other unrelated terms like psychosis or psychotic, which refers to the inability to tell reality from imagination, like when people have hallucinations or delusions. It also sounds like psychopathology, which refers to any kind of mental disorder. And then finally, the term psychopathy started to fall out of favor in the mid-1900s, in part because it had become very stigmatizing, connoting a so-called bad seed theory of antisocial behavior, that somebody with these traits had been born irredeemably bad or even evil. And around that time, psychologists were starting to learn about all the ways that the social environment affects development and behavior. So the term sociopath started to gain favor because it emphasizes social factors like trauma and abuse that can cause antisocial behavior. However, neither term was a formal clinical diagnosis yet. That changed in 1980 when yet another term, antisocial personality disorder, was added to the diagnostic and statistical manual that psychiatrists and psychologists use to make diagnoses. The only problem was that ASPD is kind of a hodgepodge of symptoms. It focuses a lot on crime and aggression, but it doesn't focus much on the personality traits that are at the core of psychopathy. And this is a problem because there are a lot of reasons that somebody might engage in frequent antisocial or criminal behavior that don't have anything to do with psychopathy. And not all people who are psychopathic engage in crime or violence at all. So today, some people use the term sociopath to mean anybody with antisocial personality disorder, although again, sociopath is not a recognized clinical or scientific term. I also recommend against using it for ethical reasons. As a culture, we recognize now that it is inappropriate and dehumanizing to refer to people as their disorder. So for example, we used to refer to people with schizophrenia as schizophrenics and people with anorexia as anorectics. But luckily, we just don't do this anymore. Nobody with antisocial personality disorder should be called a sociopath. I instead recommend referring to people as having psychopathy or psychopathic traits. This is a recognized scientific and clinical description. It refers to people who have abnormally low levels of empathy and concern for others and remorse. 
who frequently lie to and manipulate others and often seem charming and friendly even while they're exploiting or stealing from or harming other people. We have, as a scientific community, come up with really good screening tools to detect these traits. We're increasingly learning about the patterns of neural and cognitive dysfunction that cause them. And even better, evidence about effective treatments for psychopathy are starting to emerge. And thank goodness, because psychopathy absolutely is a mental disorder. Although I hasten to emphasize that nobody is born bad, psychopathy does have a strong genetic component, just like schizophrenia and autism and lots of other psychological conditions. And the first signs of it tend to emerge early in childhood. It affects people of all genders and cultures and ethnicities. And of course, nobody chooses to have it. So, even though it can be hard to feel compassion for people with psychopathy sometimes, I think we'll all be better off if we learn to accept the scientific reality of psychopathy, treat it like the public health problem that it is, and devote more public health resources to understanding it and screening for it and studying it and treating people with it. If you'd like to learn more, please visit psychopathyis.org. Thanks.